This is just a short video for YouTube user K to the K who asked a question about the module. Um, they just wanted to know, you know, how to set it up optimally so that the kit functioned, you know, in a way that suits the user. So I'm no expert on this module and I'd recommend to anybody to go to the unofficial two box forum online uh, where there are a lot of experts and um, you know they're pretty much able to answer any question that uh, anybody has from my experience um, you know that community have helped me a great deal to understand the bits about the module I needed to know and like K to the K said, that uh, the user interface is a little bit, um, you know, it's not overly intuitive. It, it doesn't sort of, it's not clear what, what you're doing from time to time. So it can be a bit awkward. But um, so this is the screen that you see when you first turn the module on. You notice down the side it says program. Um, so, you know, with building this kit, um, I've had to go through each of 20 something pads to get them to function in a way that suits my playing. So um, what you want to do first of all is press the unit button. <coughs> You'll see this mix screen where you can adjust you know um, the mix of the kit so the kick and the snare hats you know etc. So push page down until you get to this trigger page. Make sure that this, where it says type, make sure that the pad that you're playing, uh, you know, is accurately set <coughs> within the module. So if it's a 12 inch pad, <coughs> it should say pad 12. If you're using a 10 inch pad, then you just push this button until you get to the correct pad that you're using. So um, obviously crosstalk here, you can adjust that here and um, you know I generally have that off unless there's an issue with crosstalk in which case I might put it onto low and try that. If that doesn't work put it onto medium until you find a setting that you like. So when you hit one of the pads, um, I'll just try this one, you'll get a a level register here so when you hit the pad that's telling me they're a number so minus 16 minus 20 every now and then you get two numbers and when that happens I just disregard the first number that I get because uh, sorry maybe disregard the second number that you get yeah so that minus 43 I would disregard that I'm not sure why it does that, um, but it's something to do with the trigger. When you hit the pad hard, the trigger detects an initial hit and it gives you an initial value. And then it must detect a second hit as the head sort of wobbles. And um, that's why it's a much, well, looks like a higher value because it's 47, 46, but it's actually minus. So it's a, a much lower value. So that's minus 13, and there was minus 11, and then it went to minus 47. So just disregard those second values, and um, just keep hitting until you get a clear value like that, minus 11. And that's the number that you want to be paying attention to. So how to set this, from my understanding, is um, so this threshold knob, if I turn that up, after a time, it starts to stop detecting my soft hits. So I'm hitting the pad now, pretty soft, I'm not getting anything. If I start to wind the threshold back, I start to get a note here. But then if I go really soft hits, it disappears again. So I always start with the threshold set at minus 48, because that'll, picked up, that'll pick up your softest hits, as well as your hardest hits. 
So with this level, you want to get it so that <clears throat> the way to set it is set it so that when you're hitting the pad at your hardest, the hardest that you intend to hit the pad during your playing, you want that level to be registering at 0, 0.0 at the very hardest. So ideally, I'll hit it a little bit softer than my harder strokes and I'll try and get it very close to 0, 0.0. So you can see the first level there was about minus three, minus four, minus two. Again, forgetting about the second value you get, which is a bit annoying, but uh, that's just the way it seems to be. So it might not be like that for all pads. It could be this trigger on this particular pad, but I do get that happen quite a bit. So that was minus one and that was a reasonably hard hit. I'll just try a really hard hit and it went to zero. And maybe just under or just over zero. So that needs to be set accurately. So it'll still pick up my soft hits like this, minus 30s, minus 40s. And as I start to hit harder, that value will drop up, minus 13, minus 12, minus 5, up to zero. Again, so your harder strokes need to be registering very close to zero here. Otherwise, you're going to be triggering the wrong sample so when you hit the drum hard you're not going to be getting that layer that's you know that that's those corresponding samples you're going to get a much softer sample so you'll be hitting the snare hard and you won't be getting a sound that sounds like a snare being hit hard you'll be getting a much softer sound so go through each pad use your hard strokes and just make sure that that is around zero if it's not, if it's, you know, if your harder stroke is registering about minus 10, minus 15, then use this gain knob to add value to this level number. So that's not the case with this pad, because when I hit it hard, I'm getting close to zero, which is what you want. You definitely don't want it to be reading zero every time you hit a hard hit, because that means it's, it's a little bit too high, so just roll it off or here if you can if you've got some gain there to play with if you haven't and it's on zero like this then uh, <laughs> go to the unofficial two box forum and, and ask that question because as far as i know that's you know once that's hit its limit of zero um, you can't adjust that any further so that pad's working pretty good i'm hitting it pretty hard i'm getting close to zero if it was zero every time uh, Let's see if we can go over zero. I'll hit it extra hard. No. It's still... Let me see if I'll, I'll wind the gain up. See how it won't go past zero. It just stops at zero and then it jumps back to this second value, which we're not paying any attention to. So, yeah, you, you, you want it so that it's very rare that you get um, zero. Otherwise, you'll get a machine gunning type of thing where every stroke will be triggering the same sample layer. So, um, again, I'm no expert. This is how I understand the module to work, and I've set this kit up with 20-something pads, and it works quite good, um, you know, approaching each pad with this kind of setup. So, um, yeah, only use the gain if you're not getting enough level at your hardest hits to register close to zero and wind this threshold right back so it's picking up your soft notes. So maybe one way to set this correctly would be to start somewhere higher, like here, minus 12, and, and hit it as soft as you plan on hitting the pad, and then roll it back until you start to get it picking up those notes, your softest notes. So, um, you know, it's... Through those three there, you're basically setting what your hardest hits are and making sure the pad's recording them correctly and your lowest hits and making sure it's picking those up correctly as well. So once you get out of unit, to get out of this, you would just push the kit button. Um, that's how I had done it for some time. However, I think that is, is possibly wrong because if I click back on the unit button, you can see a little save question mark here. If I go onto the kit button, there's no question mark. So when you make these changes, 
in the trigger setup or in anything, any changes you make within the unit function, rather than pressing kit, which is what I did for a long time, press the unit button again before you leave and you'll see this little save question mark. So to save your changes, hit this button until that question mark disappears so that you know you've actually saved those changes. If I show you what I used to do, I would go up to unit, I would change this to, you know, whatever, so gain plus 17, then I would hit kit, and I would think because here it didn't say question mark that those changes had been saved. But if you go back to unit and go back to that page, oh, actually, let me turn the module off and see if that change was recorded. Unit, page down, gain plus eight. Oh, it didn't record it, so we'll test it again. We'll put the gain on 20, we'll go to kit, and then we'll turn the module off. This unit, page down, so the gain is still set at um, plus eight. So I made this mistake for a long time and it was really frustrating because every time I got on the kit I'd basically, you know, I'd spend half an hour getting some, you know, dialing it in, dialing in a couple of pads and then, you know, the way you get out of unit is by pressing the kit button. You can't push unit, you can't keep pushing unit to get out of unit so you have to push kit. So just remember, don't just push kit, push the unit button first after you make a change. We'll try it here, we'll gain on 20, push unit, save, kit, and then turn the unit off. If we come back to it, it should have recorded that value. There, so it's recorded that perfectly. So, um, yeah, just something to keep in mind, I guess. Make sure you save within the unit tab before you get out and go back to kit. Same thing, if you're in the kit tab, and you change, say, the tuning, we'll do that up to four. To save that change, push the kit button again, and you'll see the question mark to save it. So um, I won't do that just now because I'm happy with that kit, the way that it's functioning, or that pad. So yeah, whatever changes you make in unit or in kit, no matter what page it's on, so there's, you know, there's a bunch of pages within the unit tab and a bunch of pages within the kit pad. So whichever one you're in, if you make a change, hit that button again before you leave. Save the changes up here if you're happy with them and then you can swap over to the other to start making further changes. So um, we've just set up the pad um, and that's predominantly going to control most of what you need to get the pad set up correctly. Um, if you go down one more page, you get to this mask feature. So, mask, I don't think it was in the original software for the Drummond 5. I think it appeared in one of the updates, but just say you're using your snare pad and, uh, or, or your kick pad, probably a better example, and you're getting double notes. Um, so you might hit the pad once and, and get two sounds. Uh, the trigger might be acting too sensitively and, and picks up two sounds as the beater sort of bounces or makes contact with the, the head a second time. And this allows you to get rid of that second sound. So the, the higher this value, the less likely it is that uh, two notes will strike together. So um, I don't really use it on, on most things, but I've had to go and adjust it a couple of times for specific pads depending on what I'm playing. Um, Hi-hat calibration, obviously, you only need to do that once and for one pad. This, I don't really, I've never really played around with this screen, I've never had to. Same with this screen, outputs, I think I've only ever ended up looking at that one time. Uh, meter, that's your kick, uh, click track, which sound, so if you want to change the sound of your click track, you can go through different sounds using this button you know, tune them, edit, edit the length of that sound and that becomes your new uh, click sound. 
don't really use the MIDI function, so there's nothing to worry about there. Um, same thing here, I've never messed around with that screen, and this just tells us, you know, the, um, you know, where the modules at, the flashcards full, 99% used, 1% free, how many folders, how many files, and then the info on which operating system you're using and the serial number of your unit. So, of the unit, within that, I only ever really suggest that you make changes here. Get that pad functioning the way that you need it to function. Because otherwise the whole kit is going to feel out. And you might have three pads that function well and two pads that don't. And that's still not going to be a very fun experience. So, um, first thing, set up your trigger here in unit. And then... Uh, Second thing I would say for setting it up would be go to the kit tab and then page down one and adjust your volume for each pad so that you know the, the volumes are correct. You can also tune each sample here with that knob. Um, this is another one that I like to use for some things, um, kicks, snares, cymbals, I love to use the decay. So if you wind that all the way up, you get a sort of infinite signal or, or symbol that um, obviously gives you, allows the full sample to play. So if it's a China symbol that's got a really long decay, this will allow that. And if you start to wind it down, it starts to shorten, puts like a quick fade on the end of the a certain point of the sample so you know if you have it sort of down here where it's 0.62 of a second it's quite a quick sound so I like to use this on some of the China sounds that I use instead of getting a really big long decaying sound I wind it back and it sort of starts to sound like a stack um, very short you know punchy uh, China sound so that's good if you want to ride on a china or, or, you know. That's sort of how it started. I since started applying that to some splashes as well that have got a fast decay, uh, sorry, or a long decay, just to shorten it up a bit, make it a bit faster. And some kicks too, where you get a big note after the kick, uh, the initial sound, you get this sort of hum of the drum afterwards. You know, I will shorten that with the decay as well. And sometimes snares too. They've got a big ring and a big sample. And you can just shorten it up um, using that, which I use quite a bit. Attack obviously will roll out the attack a little bit. I've never used the hold one, but I imagine it just um, lengthens. Actually, I won't guess as to what that does, but because I've never tried it. But... Um, here, the sound layer where you get one plus. If I just hit a pad, that's showing me that there's two sound layers to that sample for that pad. So there'll be one for the head and one for the rim. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much, you can change how many of those samples you're getting, whether it's one or both. You can change which sample you use or both. So um, they're the basics of, of what I use. You might want to adjust the balance of, of things around the kit so that they're not all coming out of both speakers evenly all the time. So as you go around the kit, you might roll that off a little to one side or another, but that's basically all I really do. So hopefully that's a help to get the kit set up in a way that suits you.